Hey Internet, this is Sal Good Sam. So I wanted to do a short vlog about something that's going on in the studio right now. This is what I'm working on at this moment. It's a map. It's for Dracula, Son of the Dragon. And it's a reference. So I've got a bunch of reference material I downloaded. Uh, actual Google Earth views of the territory. Old traditional maps from just before the period the story takes place in. And some period maps that show the historic territory of Wallachia, which is the region that uh, Dracul and then Dracula were both voivods in. And our story takes place in various locations. I've got them marked around here so I can find them and I'm going to mark my map. And I'm not trying to do an actual accurate map, but I wanted to get my coastlines uh, close enough to what they really look like. So I'm sort of freehand using them for reference. And I actually did an earlier larger version. It looks like this. So I was figuring it out. And then I scanned this and turned it into printed blues. This is how I use, traditionally work with digital and printed those out. And then I've been revising using orange color erase pencil, kind of tweaking and adding things. I'm adding this crest. I mentioned in class last night, I started my dynamic drawing and uh, intro to cartooning courses for this semester at Sin Studio in downtown Montreal. And uh, I always mention in the first classes uh, of both those courses how I use gesture drawing more than constructive drawing to think out my ideas a lot. And I would say that that's a great example of that. I kind of use both, but gesture dominates heavily. I use it for these little squiggles of just sort of thinking out how things are going to work. Um, and so that's going well, uh, but it's also just like really pleasant. Uh, for the week before this, I got back from holidays and I was doing just before the holidays and right after I was working on developing my digital painting skills and getting acclimatized to working on a tablet more. I have an XP pen uh, 15.6 at home and we have Cintiqs, uh, I think a year or so old Cintiqs at the school at Cint Studio that I use for demoing and I'm going to practice on. I'll be doing a, uh, I'm planning a location design course for them and a world building course. So we'll see when that gets launched, but those are things in the works. And I wanted to like up my game in terms of working uh, demoing on Cintiqs and working digitally. I've used computers. I've had graphics programs. I've used Photoshop since the early 90s. I've had a Wacom tablets going back to the first Wacom, or not maybe the first, but like the second model of Wacom tablets. Um, I think it was the one I first bought, and I've been using it for a long time. But I've always preferred this method where I, I tend to work analog on paper and and then go through scanning stuff and editing and tweaking and printing it out and drawing some more and back and forth, but mostly the, the rendering being done analog. Um, I never was necessarily hostile to digital, to Photoshop, but it was something that came a little after when I learned how to draw and render. So I found it useful as a tool, but I never wanted to fully commit to switching media. So I just like this. And one of the things that I'm liking about this, the, so my analog drawing versus I'm finding difficult about the digital drawing are directly addresses something that I actually talk about heavily in dynamic drawing. It's uh, one of the aspects of what makes or breaks the quality of your drawing, especially on paper, is your grip and the way you use and or abuse uh, pressure and leverage and apply, making lines. When you're drawing on, on paper, you really want to be like barely pressing. So I do a lot of my sketching that light. That probably isn't even showing up on the camera. But if you if I use this black wing, which is a softer pencil, you can see the lines, not the problem. That's just a very light color. And I can control, and I don't want to draw heavily and darkly at first. I'm developing an idea until I think out what it is I'm going to do. You know, and it lets me work very quickly in, in, in a free gestural way which has always been my preference. Sort of building up ideas and a kind of loose, continuous line doodle. And then I'll go in and clarify that and figure out what I like with just a more, a bit more pressure. But I sh would say, like, even doing what I'm doing now, a lot of the work here is being done by using a soft lead pencil, this cleanup and rendering process, which is how I've always done that. I, I'll rough with a hard, an HB, or even a 2H, but then I'll clean up with a, 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 a 2B or something equivalent to that. Uh, the Palomino Blackwing is, I think, probably around a 2 to a 4B. Um, and uh, that works really well. The, one of the primary reasons is, so like a lot of people start learning how to draw, they have 
you know, I would say the majority of us end up with left-handed or right-handed, something like a writer's tripod, a tripod grip. Literally, is a tripod. There's a finger on each side of the pencil. I have a whole video about this. And that makes it very stable. And your fingerprints act as treads, so it keeps a grip. You don't need it, nor should you apply pressure to your tool. Because when you do that, that's the same. those are the same tendons and muscles in the arm that give you your movement and fine motor control movement and, and actual control. Uh, the pressure, the desire to grip hard or press hard into the paper, robs you of control. It makes for a really kind of crude line that's less dynamic and fluid. Uh, and it also will stress your hands and tendons and lead to things like carpal tunnel a lot quicker. Um, if you have a grip like, some people will have sort of a tripod, but they'll have both fingers on one side like this. And so this, the thumb is doing most of the work holding in place. You'll end up with soreness here. Uh, it's more stress. And again, this tendon and these are kind of locked in, so they don't move nearly as comfortably. So everything's being done with my wrist and arm. There are times where you want to draw with your wrist and arm, but you want it to be a choice. And there are people who have sort of grips like this. I see it particularly with left-handers. So they'll hold it like this, using all their fingers on one side. And then one of the le things lefties are often dealing with is trying to be out of their own way, because your hand's moving into what you're drawing if you go left to right. So one thing I would recommend is think about drawing from your top right corner down to the left. Take advantage of the fact that you're reversed and reverse the drawing order. Don't start up here like most people do. And like generally, the recommendation is not to start in the middle. A lot of us will start drawing something in the middle. You should start in the far top left corner and work across. So that initial gesture of composition that I do, usually do, I usually begin, I mean, not right in the corner, but up and around here and work my way down to here. And that way I'm not dragging my hand through as much. Um, maybe go back to revise things. But for a lefty, do the same. You know, Reverse it, start in the top right and work your way down. Middle maybe, but you know, you're know you trying to avoid getting in your drawing a bit, so don't just work this way like all the righties do. Um, but you'll often see people doing this uh, as well. So there's two problems with that. They're, your hand's crooked, so you're losing the flexibility and movement of your wrist as well. And then you have much reduced flexibility and diverse, uh, uh, able to, ability to move. You can wiggle a little bit, but you have much less uh, precision and control um, or range with your fingers. They're all locked up. Um, and it's basically like kind of a reverse of what's called an underhand grip, which if you do it this way, it's really good for drawing on an easel. And you actually can move a little bit, but it's for simplifying and doing large forms during like life art classes. Um, about all these grips, I wouldn't say, like, yo, you're bad. But that's not going to help you. You're going to want more than one grip. Even as an artist, the tripod on its own isn't enough because it's designed for doing small things. Writing. I don't know why I'm writing Agatha. But writing longhand or block printing. And that's a fairly precise small area exercise but most artists want to draw a little bit bigger uh, or if you're finding you're trapped and always drawing little things one of the things you can do right away to hack that is push your hand back so what I call an, an artist tripod where I just extend two, one to two inches so usually about two inches because I often start around one two inches artist tripod so right away let's say go back to here and draw a circle right at the comfort level of before I have to move my wrist that's about how big the circle ends up being. Now, if I go back and I do the same movement with my hand, look how the circle doubles in size. And if I can push back to here, I usually don't, only, I don't want to go further than where the, the end is resting on my hand, but this is a nearly full pencil, so I can go back a bit, and I get an even bigger circle. Um, and just because I'm exaggerating, enlarging the movement by having more pencil here. Uh, and that helps for opening up and doing the kind of gestural sketching I do to rough my drawings. That's what I'm doing as I'm using holding it back and really quick. So um, that gives you a fair number of options. And there is like the underhand for drawing on an easel when the paper is up at an angle. And the overhand, which is just tw twist your wrist around for drawing on a flat surface, but getting the same results, which is to intentionally lock up your hands and thumb, your fingers and your thumb in a comfortable way where there's no real pressure involved. You're just trapping it and then drawing with your wrist elbow and shoulder in large forms particularly handily doing gesture drawing during life models 
drawings and for drawing more controlled forms where you don't want the complications that come from moving your knuckles and fingers and articulating too much. Um, look at my videos on line control for what I'm talking about there. So, drawing technique 101. So why is this a problem with digital? So again, remember, I'm not pressing on the tool and I'm not pushing into the paper. I'm just touching it and the medium rubs off on the paper, leaving a more unsatisfactory mark. That's not how these work. This is my X-Pen, this is my Wacom. To get them to work, so I can kind of hover over the tablet and it knows where my cursor, my cursor knows where my pen is, it follows it. But to get to any kind of work at all, I don't just put my pen on the screen, I have to gently press. That's how a line begins. And so I have my, my control set so that I can apply the least amount of pressure and get a line. So if this is my gradient thing my, on my tablet's controls, they're often like this. They don't even go to this corner because I don't want to use that last bit of pressure to get my really thickest line. So I've knocked that out and sometimes even have it like here. But the main thing is that most of my line weight happens in the first quarter, right? And I can use just gentle pressure to a little bit of pressure to get some line weight. Um, but it does mean that I'm pressing all the time, whereas I rarely do that with pencil. Um, I can pretty much just use gravity in my hand and let more of it come on the page rather than actually use force. But that doesn't work as well with these things. They actually need a little more articulation to work well, I find. I can't just let its weight on the screen do it. I have to apply pressure, which means that I'm always now using mostly these two, their tendons and muscles in a way that I don't normally working analog. So right away, and this is something I've heard people talk about digital, digital fatigues quicker. I get tired um, much faster than I do sketching or doing watercolor, especially brushwork. There's no pressure at all. You're, if anything, you have the opposite effect. You can't feel the brush touching the page until you're already just making a big mess. So um, it's a bit of an adjustment. I don't enjoy it. I have to work in smaller intervals, which is a pain in the ass. I also find that the tool on the glass, the second issue, because it's glass, there's more skating. The tool, once I start applying pressure, will sometimes just sort of go off and not go where I want it to as well. Um, and that especially happens when I lean a little bit, which I have a tendency to always hold my, my tool at a bit of an angle. Um, I could get into doing this more, but I don't think that it necessarily helps. And it's I don't find it uh, as comfortable. I end up being even closer to the nib. And I always, I'm, on both of these, I'm always fighting the, the problem that these buttons are right where my most preferred comfortable grip is. I don't want them right there. I would like them a little further away, like further up or somewhere else where my fingers aren't going to be. And you can see they're pretty much always somewhere really close. And I have a habit from using pencils in order to keep them sharp of rotating as I work, which I don't try to, but just the way I move my hand, it's become kind of built in. So I find this thing rotates, particularly this one. Um, and I'm always clicking this when I don't want to, and that's annoying. Uh, and to avoid that, I end up getting too close, and it's still sort of tight, and it's on an angle, and I'm pressing hard, and my hand gets tired, and then I'm on glass, and so it skates and it jumps. So precision's a problem. And so, like, for example, look at these uh, landscape studies again. So this was really, I found Noah Bradley's tips on YouTube really helpful for figuring out how to adapt what I already knew about working in traditional media and having done many location designs that way to doing these tonal studies using Photoshop. So you know, block brush, great idea. Uh, I don't have a lot of uh, pressure sensitivity for, for none for size and just a little for, for opacity. So I can get a bit of easier smoothing gradient effects. And when I'm initially blocking out, I don't even have that on. I'm just using a big block brush. And um, occasionally I have the size settings. So sensitivity based on uh, pressure, sensitivity based on size and it's fine getting what are fairly loose roughs. Like these are a bunch of them reducing the screen and that, that makes things look tighter. But if you blow it up, they're actually quite uh, rough. Uh, and that's fine if you're just doing studies, but when I want to get into doing finished locations, I'm going to want to want more clarity and precision. I You can blow things up really huge, but I find that annoying and I lose track of where I am easily. And if I shrink things down, I lose my precision. 
uh, and and my hands fatiguing, and it's just annoying. I don't understand why people want to work digitally versus analog. I will learn how to. I don't think it's impossible, but I don't find it nearly as pleasant as working in watercolor or graphite. Uh, the undo button is definitely not worth it. Um, now, you know, not to say I won't ever do it. I'm going to definitely be doing it, but I can definitely see how it takes this stuff. This takes longer and it's more physically stressful. Um, and that's an interesting revelation. I've kind of heard people talk about this and I wasn't really sure how much that was just people not adapting well, but I think I'm quite flexible and I'm adapting and I get the technical demands, of the medium, but I think the parameters, the physical de demands, of the medium, the physical nature of digital painting on glass is counterproductive to what is the healthiest approach for your grip and how to use your tools. And what I love the most about not just working with pencil, but working with things like brush, where there is no pushback, there is no issue of pressure on the page. You're just kissing the paper with the tip of the brush to get your, your baseline, your finest line. And then it's about applying pressure as you go to get variation in line weight that you don't feel at all. You have to see it. It's 100% vision-based. Um, there's no tactile feedback for a good brush. Uh, until you're mashing the whole brush into the page and you just have a big mess, which can be fun, but that's not something you're doing most of the time for most of the art. Um, and I like that medium the most, watercolor and brush. Elegant, light in the hand, um, very expressive. I can do an immense amount of detail really quickly in a few strokes. I know how to get the medium to do things, depending on what paper and what ink or medium that I'm working with, that... I just have to do too much passes and, ver and layers and apply too much pressure in Photoshop to find anywhere near as enjoyable. So in order to adapt, I'm basically having to knock down the level of detail and or frequently blow up the art to really huge sizes in order to get anything approximating what I like uh, in terms of detail. Um, it's just slower and more fatiguing and frustrating. <laughs> so that's my vlog post. That's what's going on in the studio. I'm going to go back to making my map and enjoying myself working on paper. I will probably do some of the cleanup of this again, as, as I normally do digitally. But I'm going to probably clean up the pencils first and render things like this crest in a second pass here. So these will be my clean pencils. And then again, I will scan them and print blues. Uh, for printing blues, check out my, my channel again. I've got a video from way back about that. And I'll print those again on 11 by 17. And then I'm going to decide whether I render it with uh, an ink or something else, uh, possibly a fine ink line, and then uh, so it was done like a nib, and then I do watercolors and ink wash on it and some stains, and then some tinting in Photoshop to get a, an antique map for Dracula, Son of the Dragon with Mark Sable coming out probably in a while. Definitely Revolver 5 will have the rest of the story, which is coming this spring. And Kickstarter backers will be getting their books finally after much, much too long waiting uh, in the mail or various other means. Um, probably also in the spring at this rate, maybe a little starting a little sooner, but uh, really the bulk of it will go happening in the spring. Um, so keep tuned for that. Uh, keep drawing. For those of you who love digital painting, this is not an indictment of your medium. I just exploring and discovering new things about it that I don't enjoy. Um, there are things that are kind of fun about it and for quick sketching and, and roughing and even some pencil, aspects of penciling, I'm finding it an interesting uh, medium to work with. Uh, it's just taking things to that final stage. It's just so much easier and more pleasant, for me anyway, working on paper with uh, whatever medium I, I choose. Um, if you want to check out the channel on a regular basis, don't forget to hit subscribe and please like if you do indeed uh, share with your friends post them on social media that kind of stuff uh, there is a patreon page patreon.com slash salgood to pledge for a buck or two and you get to read my comics uh, and just generally help things out time month to month and there are higher tiers if you want to get more involved and you'll help me mainly mostly make my art but also you can suggest things like what I should talk about in my next to lose. Have fun. See you around.